artificial intelligence has been having a recurring issue for a while now. Sometimes it can be kind of racist. Now racism is often associated with intent, so I'm going to start by clarifying what I mean by racism here. For the purposes of this video, racism is discriminating against a particular group of people based on race on the assumption that they are inferior. This assumption of inferiority is often based on perpetuated stereotypes or the perpetuation of systemic inequalities. It is also often not a conscious assumption. People are raised in the world that they live in and may be taught things that are not factually true. In other words, there may not be racist intent, but that might be the outcome. But does AI have intent? Well, no. At the end of the day, artificial intelligence is comprised of tens or hundreds or thousands of lines of code that run on some kind of computer. It doesn't think or reason, and so it cannot intend to discriminate. However, just because it cannot intend to doesn't mean it doesn't. Let's look at some examples of this. One of the biggest examples of discrimination using AI was recidivism prediction, or how likely someone is to recommit a crime. ProPublica published an article entitled Machine Bias about three years ago that highlighted a software that people were using to determine how likely a defendant was to recommit a crime when going to trial. The catch was that the software was a lot more likely to assign black people a much higher risk than any other demographic group, and white people in general were assigned lower risks than any other demographic group. If we look at the history of recidivism rates by demographic, the software was vastly off. Now, interestingly, the questionnaire that was used to generate this risk score doesn't ask about race. Race is not a question. Instead, it asks about their upbringing, their past history with the criminal justice system, and pulls from their existing records in the criminal justice system. This information was used in court to determine what types of punishments defendants should receive if convicted, and likely resulted in many cases of people receiving harsher punishments than they should have. Why does this happen? Well, because even though the questionnaire doesn't ask directly about race, it asks about your socioeconomic history, which is directly tied to race in a lot of ways. This can be extrapolated to the larger issue of bias in artificial intelligence. As we talked about in our How Does AI Work and Neural Networks video, AI uses statistics to find links between input variables and output labels. However, these links or correlations in the data may not be causal. That is, just because variable A leads to output B doesn't mean that A causes B. This is the challenge of correlation versus causation. Let's look at an example. Here's a graph of two variables that are very closely linked to each other. You can input the variable on your x-axis, multiply it by some linear factor, and get the variable on your y-axis. Now, what are the variables? Well, the x-axis is the total revenue generated by ski resorts, and the y-axis is the number of people who died annually due to being tangled in their bed sheets. Clearly not related things. In other words, this is a correlation, not a causation. Increasing ski resort revenue is not causing more people to die from becoming tangled in their bed sheets. It's just that they have similar trends that occur around the same time. Another factor is the distribution of your data. How well does your data set match the population that will be affected by it? This mismatch has led to a lot of issues in facial recognition where data sets are often biased towards white men and are severely lacking women of color. This leads to AI that can recognize white men with a 99% accuracy but labels black women as gorillas. Now, just because AI can sometimes be racist doesn't mean it can't be fixed. In fact, there's been a lot of work in this area. You can use data sets that accurately represent the population that will be affected by it. You can validate your predictions against historical or current trends to make sure that you're not over predicting on one group and under predicting on the other. But in any case, with the rise of the use of AI, especially things like facial recognition, it's something that really needs to be dealt with, lest we let AI perpetuate systemic inequality. So I'm only touching the surface of this topic. AI ethics is a huge field right now. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I'd recommend starting with that ProPublica article on machine bias. You should also definitely check out Joy Bull and Weenie's AI Ain't I a Woman video, which I'll link here and in the description box. You should also just generally follow everything that Joy Bull and Weenie is doing because she's amazing and is 
doing some really amazing work in this area. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and smashing that like button. You can also support me on Patreon, where you'll get behind the scenes sneak peeks of how I create my videos and the upcoming topics for the month. Thanks so much to all my current patrons for support. And otherwise, you can find me on Twitter and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.